Guys, today's the day I finally present you the Airfly. Airfly is a mid-size controller for your ATEM switcher or your vMix system. And uh, the reason why they are kind of locked down to those two things is because we have uh, put labels on the keypads that will fit either those systems. So for vMix, we have a different set of labels and for ATEM, we have a set of labels that perfectly fit how ATEM switches are constructed. But that will also, to a large degree, map onto other switcher systems. And of course, it's all powered by Unisketch, so there really is no login necessarily on these controllers. Now, uh, let's just get to it and see what it does. It has uh, all the new technology you find in Skyhoy controllers with um, backlit RGB keys, we have OLED displays, we have some degree of four-way buttons uh, built into these units, but let's just stick to the basic and look at what uh, it does out of the box. It changes sources on preview and on program, and if we go to the ATEM switcher software, which is connected to, you see how this is, of course, reflected as you would imagine. I have a fader for making transitions, I have auto transition, I have cut, I have fade to black, on and off, I have a shift key that gives me access to sources 11 up to 20 and media player 2, for instance. So that's all very, very cool. You, uh, In other words, this uh, surface will fit very well with the smallest ATEM switches and all the way up to the largest ones. And it can be configured to address um, uh, ME row 2 if you want. This whole section up here is working with the keyers. So you have keyer 1, keyer 2, the upstream keyers. You can even do an auto transition on those. You can also turn on and off the downstream keyers and make auto transitions on those as well. You can tie them to transitions. You can also pick your transition style. So you can go mix, dip, wipe, and so forth. And then you have a whole menu section right here. Now, let's look at that menu section because this is really where this interface blows your mind because you can map the bus rows to do other things than just ME switching. You can go to the auxiliary um, menu and now those two rows will switch sources on the auxiliary bus. So if we pull up the auxiliary one bus, you can see I am changing sources on auxiliary one. If I pull up this for auxiliary two, auxiliary two, right there. If I hold down the shift key, I even have access to sources outside 1 to 10 and media player and color and so forth. If I go to media, I change media from the media pool. So let's just go over there. You can see media player 1, media player 2, just picking those. I can even use the shift key and access. Again, media stills outside numbers 1 to 10. If I go to Kia, I have set it up to select uh, fill and key sources for Kia number 1. This is again programmable. You can do that differently in the configuration interface. If you go to macros, we have access to macro execution. And uh, if we just pull that up right there, you can see macros one to six. You can play them back here as you want um, by pressing this key and so on. Now let's go to the audio part. So we even have access to audio and I go to the audio tab. You can see the lower row will turn on and off audio sources by pressing these buttons and the upper row will be audio follow video. So it's like toggling between these two as you press these buttons. Also in the audio uh, case, I have used the LED bars up here to be confidence VU metering, which is so cool that you can do that with the LED bars. They have not just a single color, but they have three colors and it's RGB LEDs inside. So we can even uh, signal what is the strength of the audio. Is it green? Is it yellow? Is it red and peaking? This is what those uh, confidence VU monitoring LED bars can be used for in this case. And I set it up to map those to um, the, the audio levels found in the ATEM switcher. Okay, so what I want to do finally in this video is to show you the section with the displays because that's where you are really unlocking everything that you haven't seen until now with displays that will clearly show you exactly what these parameters are working on. So take a look at this coolness. We are still in the audio section and you see that this gives you access to adjust volume of channels 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 as I press the edges of these four-way buttons. This is called four-way button. So when I press the edge, it will work as an encoder to turn the volume up or down as you can see and it's perfectly reflected in the interface of the ATEM switcher if I want to uh, see that as well. You see this for channel number 1. 
So if I go back to some of the others, then I've set this up to also reflect different functionality depending on the menu section. So here, for instance, we have actually access to changing the full range of transition positions, not just those that were broken out on separate buttons. I can also change the um, uh, frame rate of mix effects. I can uh, work with the picture in picture. I can, uh, here I've put out the, the volume for the master and for the um, XLR input. So uh, I have those available in the ME uh, menu section because they are likely to be those that you want to adjust uh, when you are in the ME section. And if you want to have access to individual channels, you go to the audio section, of course. That's pretty clear. If you go here, you see, and that's that's really mind-blowing, right? You have access to all six auxiliary inputs uh, or outputs. So here, again, you can use these as four-way buttons to cycle through which output will be on a given auxiliary output or input will be on output. Sorry about that. Here we have access to media player one and two. Again, four-way buttons. I can cycle, Kia, fail source, fail source, fail source. And if I hold down the shift key, it's gonna be key source. So full access to all four upstream keyers, two downstream keyers, fill and key source in these uh, four-way button in, in this whole user section up here. Macro playback. Now you can see the names of the macros. And now we have been in the audio uh, case. Then we have DVE over here and the user section. And what is the user section? Well, guess what? That's for you. That's where you put your functionality. But that's for a different video. And I've been talking a lot in this video to get through all the default features you find in the Airfly. But I think it's just so amazing at the price tag you get. It just can't be beaten. Enjoy the Airfly. I hope that it fits you well and it will be your perfect start with Skyhoy controllers and ATEM switches or VMIX systems. <laughs>